Hillary with Waterlogged. Today, we're going to talk about Anthias. Before we get started talking too much about Anthias, I want to give you a couple um, things about them that hopefully will give you some insight if you do decide to purchase Anthias and add them to your home aquariums. So first off, Anthias are one of those species that aren't necessarily the best type of fish that are geared towards aquariums. And the reason for that is a lot of these different species actually are found out in the wild in relatively deep waters. Um, when I say deep, I mean beyond 65 feet of depth and all the way down to 500 feet deep. So if you think about aquarists and you know these habitats that we recreate there's a lot of stuff that we've done that we can replicate environments out in the wild but creating depth in home aquariums and creating the pressure that goes along with depth is something that we still have a ways to get towards so you know when i say some of these species are tricky and very finicky and hard to keep that's one of the reasons why now the next thing i want to let you know about is that antheus are hermaphroditic Typically, when you see a group of them, they're gonna be a whole harem of females and there's gonna be one male. Now, if something happens to that male, one of the females will change sex and take the role of that male. We'll talk a little bit more about this later on when we discuss tank mates, but those are just some things to keep in mind when it comes to adding Anthias to your tanks. All right, let's break it down into some of the common and not so common species that you might find at your local fish store. First off is the Leertail Anthias. Those are, you know, probably one of the more common species that I have seen out in the hobby. There is the Bartlett's Anthias. Those guys are gonna be pretty cool. If you are looking for a fish to swim and hang out in the middle of the water column, definitely consider those guys. Next is the Dispar Anthias. That's another one that's fairly common. And of all of the different Anthias species that we're talking about today, these guys out in the wild typically hang out in shallow reefs. So if you have a really good chance of keeping them successfully, these might be the Anthias for you, especially if you are a beginner or new to the hobby. Next is the resplendent anthias. Now these guys, you will actually be able to see a difference in color between the males and the females. It's pretty cool to watch. And they're another species that will hang out kind of in the mid level of your tank. Next is one of, I feel like this fish has a cult following, the Bourbonius anthias or the Borb anthias. I know several people online that have them. People have gotten tattoos over them. Um, it's not a fish that you see that often, and when you do see it, they have a pretty high price tag, but they are gorgeous, gorgeous fish. This is another one that actually comes from relatively deeper waters in comparison to all of these others, so it's a little bit tricky when it comes to keeping them in home tanks. Next up, we have the fat head sunburst anthias. Um, again, it's another deep water species. It likes a lot of overhangs and particularly low light in tanks. So if you've got a really tall tank, this might be a better fish for you to look for. Next is going to be the squareback anthias. This is another one where you're gonna see differences in um, the males and the females versus their colors, but it is another one of those deeper water species that are out there. This last anthias, I, I feel like it's another one of those, kind of like the Borbonius, uh, the Ventralis anthias, or the Longfin anthias. These guys, I've talked to several people that absolutely, this is like their holy grail fish, that they get them and they just can't keep them because they're very shy fish. They tend to be very picky eaters. Um, even if you get them, they just don't do well because they do come from so deep and they're not used to the tank environments that we have in our home aquariums. That sums up all of the different species that we're gonna go over today, but let's talk about some of the sizes that they'll get to be and the tank sizes that they need. Most of these species, with the exception of the Ventralis, it's probably gonna stay about two and a half inches. Um, so it's not gonna get that big, but all of the other ones will be anywhere between about six to seven inches. Um, on the larger side and four inches on the smaller side. So if you're just keeping one of them, you can get away with keeping it in a 70 gallon tank. But if you're gonna have more than one of any of these, you need to go up to a 125 gallon tank in minimum. All right, let's go ahead to the kitchen and talk about diet and nutrition for some of these fish. 
diet and nutrition for some of your anthias. This is my favorite part of these videos. Now, before I get into talking about the different types, I'm curious if you've ever kept an anthias or if you're keeping them now, how many times a day have you had to feed them? That's one of the actually tricky parts about keeping anthias is making sure that they're well fed because a lot of times they can eat anywhere from two to four times a day. So a lot of the foods that I'm gonna talk about today are gonna to be on that dry pellet flake side as opposed to those frozen foods because when you have the dry foods, it's easy to put them in an auto feeder and you don't necessarily have to be home to ensure that they are getting food. Now, anthias, most of the ones that we've talked about today are carnivores, so they're gonna eat a lot of those meatier foods, but if you are feeding a community tank and they get some veggies, that's not gonna be an issue. All right, so first off is going to be our flake foods, right? Now, anthias can feed um, in the middle and the top of the water column, so that's a good thing about flakes. They're gonna be floating. The anthias will be able to eat those, no problem. So if you're thinking about using flakes, if you've got some other fish in the tank that will eat the flakes, Flakes are not an issue for you to use with your anthias. Next up is going to be the New Life Spectrum Foods. These are some of my favorites that are out on the market. This one is probiotic. It's got a great blend. It does have probiotics in it, and it's just a good, well-rounded pellet. Now, another one by them that I really love is the Thera A. Now, the thing about Thera A is that it's got a little bit of extra garlic in it. And some of the anthias that you might be keeping in home aquariums are tad picky eaters. So this has already got that um, appetite boosting garlic in there so you don't have to worry about it. And both of these come in a variety of different sizes. So when you're picking a pellet for your anthias, make sure that it's about half the size of their mouth so they don't have any problems eating it. Next up is going to be the Nios Wild Goji. Now, I've talked about this one in some of the other videos, and the reason I like it for Anthias is because it has that axaxanthin in it. It's gonna have um, that red boosting color uh, ability for those Anthias. Most of these that we've talked about are reds, pinks, oranges, purples, beautiful, beautiful colors, and this will help to bring out those colors in them. Next is the P.E. Mysis pellets. Um, again, Anthias tend to be picky, finicky eaters. A lot of times, if you can't get them to eat stuff, you might be able to get them to eat the mysis. So this is a good option. Just once you get them eating, I wouldn't do this every single feed. Now our last dry pellet food today is the Reef Nutrition TDO food. This is a great one, good for those small mouths, and it's a, gonna be another one of those foods that will help to bring out those beautiful reds and purples and orange colors in your anthias. Okay, moving on, let's talk about, um, I guess, the liquid foods. This is a new category. We haven't talked about this in any of the other videos before, but Reef Nutrition, I'm a big fan of theirs. They have a great line of products when it comes to some of the liquid foods that you can pour in. Now, they're not frozen, but you keep them in your refrigerator. So this one is going to be the Roe. It's the real ocean eggs, great for those small anthias mouths. Moving on to our frozen foods. So as always, we have the Prime Reef. One of the reasons I love this one is because you can bust it out of those little blister cubes. It makes it good. If you don't have a ton of fish to feed, you can really easily feed portion control with this stuff. Now, this is a repeat of the pellet version, but if you want to do the PE Mysis, it does come in the frozen version. You can get it in the big packs like this, or you can also get it in the cubes. So it's entirely your preference and what other animals that you are feeding. Another um, blister pack that you can use is the Reef Multi-Pack. Again, this one has a bunch of the varieties in it. It does have some of those eggs in there for the um, Anthias and their smaller mouths. This one works really great. Second to last is going to be our brine shrimp. Um, if you are feeding them, this is a good thing to feed on a fairly regular basis. So I would recommend keeping some brine shrimp on hand just for them. Lastly is the krill. Again, this is another one that comes in the blister packs. It's relatively small. It's easy for them to eat so they don't have any issues. Now, I know in the past we've talked about some of the copepods that you can add to the tank, but I would recommend, because they will eat copepods, is to put one of those pod habitats in your tank to help boost and keep that pod population well established and thriving so that, you know, even if you don't have an auto feeder on there, or if you do, they'll always have a pod or something to eat, even if you're not around to feed them. 
Okay, let's go and talk about some of the issues that your Antheus might have. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you've ever kept an Antheus, if you've had any issues with it, or if you've been totally successful. I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that it's been a successful run for you. But as I'm sure you might have gathered from the rest of this video, Antheus can be picky, really tricky fish to keep. Now, one of the things that they encounter is uranema. Now, I've talked about this in some of the other videos, and you could treat it with copper. I'm personally not a big fan of copper. Actually, I really like the Quick Cure by Mardell. It works really good. It just can make a mess, but the formalin that's in there works very, very well for that. Now, Antheus can be prone to bacterial infections and all sorts of stuff, but um, before you put them in your tank, you should really consider putting them through a quarantine before they go into your display system. Now, I know a lot of people out there, they go ahead and do a preventative treatment before they even see any issues. So you can use both of these two medicines in combination. Um, you can mix them in with some food or they make a product called Focus that allows you to bind them together and feed that as well. Just make sure that you're keeping up on feeding and your water quality when you're doing that. Now, the big issue, the other big issue that we haven't talked about or we've mentioned, but haven't focused is starvation. Now, I've talked in the kitchen and before about how these guys need to eat all of the time. They're constantly out there eating when they're in the wild reefs and you need to feed them, like I mentioned, two to four times a day. So if you can't do that, that can lead to some issues. So one of the things that I recommend is getting an auto feeder and just putting that on a timer and having it feed at least twice a day um, and then you can also feed as well. Just make sure you're not overfeeding. Kind of watch and see how much food is left in your tank after a feeding. Now they can be picky eaters, which means they might not necessarily want to eat what you offer. Now I did mention downstairs in the kitchen, we talked about some of the mysis. I know a lot of fish that are picky eaters will go after the mysis right away, but there's a couple other products that are out on the market that you can use. One of them is garlic. Garlic acts as an appetite stimulant. It just kind of makes them hungry. I know we've talked about this before, but if you go to like an Italian restaurant and you smell that garlic bread, you're like, oh yes, and it, it gets you hungry, you're ready to eat. The next product is another Brightwell product. Um, it is Angel Elixir, and it's supposed to be really good at helping to entice those finicky, picky fish and get them eating. So give both of those a try. Now, I'm a big fan of preventative stuff. So I've mentioned Antheas are very sensitive fish. They can be tricky. So when you're adding Antheas, consider adding a product like Dr. Tim's First Defense. It's gonna help to boost their immune system and help to reduce their stress levels. In addition to adding products like this, you can also add vitamins to your food on a regular basis. If you've seen some of the other videos that I've done, you know I like to add vitamins to the food just to help give that a little bit of extra boost, especially for those fish like Antheas that do need it. All right, let's go ahead and talk about enrichment because that can help your fish live a good, happy, healthy life. Now, antheas are one of those species that are gonna be living down deep in the reefs. They're gonna be living along rock work in caves and stuff like that. So when you are designing your tank, consider adding a lot of rock work and caves and areas for them to hide. Um, some areas that you know might be a little bit lower lit than some of the other areas of your tank. I'm sure your antheas will definitely enjoy that. You can also switch up the flow patterns because a lot of times if you find them, they're gonna be schooling or gonna be in together in a group and changing up the flow will give them something new and interesting to explore as well as can help disperse some of the food that you might be feeding. Speaking of food, I mentioned this in the kitchen, you can add one of these pod habitats to help enhance and boost the population of copepods in your tank. So even if that auto feeder isn't going off, they're still going to have some food in the tank for them to hunt and go after. Next thing is the lighting. Now, again, we mentioned that some of the lights in their natural habitats are very low lit levels. They're not gonna get as much light as some of our brighter coral reefs are. So consider if you have a programmable light, um, you know, maybe having some periods of time where the light isn't quite as bright um, and give them a break from some of that bright light. They will probably enjoy that. The last thing when it comes to enrichment is tank mates. 
Now, Anthias, for the most part, are very peaceful fish. A lot of them will get along very well in a community and with each other. However, if you are going to have a group of Anthias, you need to, you're probably gonna have one male and a group of females. I would recommend at least two or more females to one male. And that also, if you're gonna do it, go ahead and make sure you are looking at tanks that are 125 gallons and up just to give them a bunch of space to swim around in. They'll really enjoy that. Now, some species of Anthias, they can be a little bit shy and reserved and they might not do well with other um, more aggressive fish. So things like lionfish, groupers, puffers, um, angelfish, use caution when pairing some of the Anthias with these. But there is no excuse. Go ahead and do your research before you buy any fish. Make sure that what you have in your tank and what you want to add is going to get along well. You can also use the Marine Depot's fish compatibility chart. It is a phenomenal research resource and feel free to ask around at your local fish store. They are typically a wealth of knowledge. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you next time.